I am uh, <clears throat> going to talk about global warming revisited. The reason it's revisited, I got introduced to global warming here in Lindau. And I was in a panel discussion in 2008. And it was a panel discussion about global warming. And I didn't really want to, particip to participate. But uh, they said you really had to. And so I spent maybe half a day or a day or so looking at Google. And I was horrified by what I found. And so I got interested in global warming a little bit. And because I was on this uh, panel discussion, I looked at uh, Google and I looked at Gaber and global warming because I've been on one panel discussion. And I got roughly 40,000 results. If I look at my mind and look at my name and say Gaber and superconductivity, I got much fewer results. <laughs> Global warming is really a hot topic. And what I said then, and which I still believe, is that global warming really has become a new religion. Because you can't discuss it. It's not proper. If you say global See, if you see, if you look at Linda here today, then all the people who are, you know, notable people, they have said climate change in their talks. All of them have said it. I don't know whether they know what they mean, but they have said it anyway. Everybody talks about climate change. That actually made quite a much more story than I thought it would have. So. It really, global warming really starts with due to these two people, Al Gore and Paul Curry, or however you pronounce it. And what they did, they made this curve popular. I know that's hard to read from the audience, but on the vertical scale is degrees in 0.1 degrees. So roughly one degree is the whole vertical scale. And the horizontal scale is in years from 1860 to 19 or to 2000. And you see, the global warming has increased, but the fact the scale is like, because the scale is absolutely distorted. I mean, there's one degree there. And so what does this curve measure? Well, this curve measures what does the, the average temperature for the world for a whole year and for a whole, whole Earth, for one year. So there's an average temperature for the whole Earth for one year, and that measures in a fraction of a degree. And you see, the global warming has increased, but the fact the scale is like the well, dentist used when they advertised by you know, dent toothpaste, because the scale is absolutely distorted. I mean, there's one degree there. And so what does this curve measure? Well, this curve measures what does the, the average temperature for the world for a whole year and for a whole, whole Earth, for one year? So there's an average temperature for the whole Earth for one year, and that measures in a fraction of a degree. So what does that mean? I think probably nothing. So let me talk about that again. From 1880 to 2017, the temperature has increased from 288 to 288.83 Kelvin, 0.3%. I think the temperature has been amazingly stable. If I take where I live in Albany, New York, there are roughly 80 degree K difference between summer and winter at some time. And so would you think that point Eight degree average on the Earth makes any difference to the climate in Albany? Is that sensible to you? Oh, the wrong way. So here is then where the temperature is measured. And you see there's point on the graph, so if you can read that, in the north of 60 degrees is 167 measurements between uh, 30 and 60 degrees is light, quite a lot of measurements. The United States is all covered with things and stuff. So if you go, if you go finally to the South Pole, there are eight thermometers. 
<laughs> according to NASA. That's all they have, including the South Pole. Eight thermometers. And so if you had eight thermometers to measure the average temperature in Germany, where would you put those eight thermometers? You know, eight thermometers for the continent. It's nothing. And the fact is, as I, as I deal with the South Pole, there had never been as cold on the South Pole as it is right now. It's a mystery continent at the bottom of the world and the largest single mass of ice on Earth. For longer than humans have walked the planet, ice has dominated Antarctica. But what about the future? Ice melts from this continent, sea level goes up. As Earth gets warmer, what will happen to Antarctica? We're going into uncertain lands, uncertain future. How will the Earth respond? Today. If I take where I live in Albany, New York, there are roughly 80 degree K difference between summer and winter at some time. And so would you think that 0.8 degree average on the Earth makes any difference to the climate in Albany? And the other thing which upset me is that what is the optimum temperature for the Earth? Is that the temperature we have right now? That would be a miracle. Maybe it's two degrees warmer. Maybe it's two degrees colder. But nobody has told me what the optimal temperature is for the whole Earth. The other thing is that both the alarmist and the deniers, I guess I'm quoted as a denier, measures the average temperature for the whole, for the whole Earth for a whole year at to a fraction of a degree. And that result is significant. Of course it's not. How can you possibly measure the average temperature for the whole Earth and for the whole year and come up with a fraction of a degree? So I have this slide here. I think the average temperature of the Earth is equal to the emperor's new clothes. It was a, was a boy who said, you know, cried, that's my, the emperor has no clothes on. So let me talk about that again. From 1880 to 2017, the temperature has increased from 288 to 288.83 Kelvin, 0.3%. I think the temperature has been amazingly stable. So let me talk about that again. From 1880 to 2017, the temperature has increased from 288 to 288.83 Kelvin, 0.3%. I think the temperature has been amazingly stable because the scale is absolutely distorted. I mean, there's one degree there. The Earth's temperature is remarkably stable, perfectly stable. It has never changed at all. It ch it's changed by 0.3 degrees Kelvin. It's barely ever changed at all. It is unbelievably stable. The Earth is stable. They have been lying about this Sure, you can say that it's changed by a few degrees over here or a few degrees over here, but when you take the Earth's mean average temperature over 300 years, it has never changed. They are measuring the differences between one degree and then blowing up the chart and showing you the chart in between the degree changes. This is what Al Gore shows you in his convenient inconvenient truth it has never changed when they sh shrink that graph in it looks as though it's it's changed drastically but those are the changes between one degree so there are no changes to speak of as a whole so this one is important this one is one that should be spread around to everybody to understand that this guy is a nobel laureate He's been following this for 50, 60 some years. 
and he knows the difference and here's the scientific proof it has ne they admit themselves that it has never changed within one degree so they can try to tell you all they want that it's gone up two degrees four degrees eight degrees that earth is going to melt that the poles are going to melt it's not going to happen it never will happen more co2 is released in one volcanic explosion than in the history of humankind driving or operating machinery or running plants one volcano pinatubo just pinatubo we have krakatoa we have thousands of volcanoes all over the earth that go off all the time and they they don't affect the earth's climate it still hasn't changed within three de within one degree from all of these volcanoes so obviously co2 it's pretty much out of the picture as far as causing damage to the earth of course it's not how can you possibly measure the average temperature for the whole earth and for the whole year and come up with a fraction of a degree of course it's not how can you possibly measure the average temperature for the whole earth and for the whole year and come up with a fraction of a degree and what I said then, and which I still believe, is that global warming really has become a new religion. So let me talk about that again. From 1880 to 2017, the temperature has increased from 288 to 288.83 Kelvin, 0.3 percent. So what does that mean? We're nothing. I think the temperature has been amazingly stable. That global warming really has become a new religion.